Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a GCD LCM problem. We're doing this type of problem for the first time, so I'm very excited. And this type of notation is very commonly used, so I just wanted to uh, introduce that as well. Uh, if you use brackets, uh, like a comma b, this means the LCM of two numbers. So we can write it like this, and we're going to be using this notation basically consistently. And this means the GCD of two numbers, which is the greatest common divisor. And LCM stands for least common multiple. Okay, so we're talking about two things here, multiple of two numbers and the uh, divisor of two numbers. Obviously, M is greater than D. That's why, did I say M? Okay, that's what I mean. So let's go ahead and define the following then. LCM of AB, let's call that M for the multiple, and let's call this D for the divisor. All right, and let's set up our equation in a simpler way, so like this, m minus d is equal to 143. So we're going to be looking for values of a and b. Obviously, a and b are interchangeable, so when I write my answer, I'm not necessarily going to worry about the ordered pairs, but rather as a set. At the end, I'm going to write my answer like that. Okay, now, m minus d is equal to 143. So you can kind of like plug in some numbers here and guess and check, but that's not a good idea. Let's do it more systematically using some tools from number theory. Now, LCM and GCD are obviously two, two important concepts in number theory, and this is how it goes. Definitely, when we're finding the least common multiple of two numbers, it will contain the maximum of the you know, prime powers, and the d, which is the GCD, is going to contain the minimum of the powers. Therefore, the multiple, the LCM, is always going to be divisible by GCD. So in other words, we can safely say that D divides M. That's a very important, you know, uh, fact that we need to use. Another fact is obviously D divides itself, right? And now when you put these two together, when you put these D together, what is that supposed to mean? Like D divides M and D divides D. Well, we know that if D divides two different things, that it also divides their sum, their difference, you know, uh, in any type of linear combination. So this basically implies that D divides M minus D, since this divides both, but M minus D is just equal to 143. This implies that D divides 143. Awesome. This is a very important result because it's going to restrict us to certain numbers. Now, we know that the greatest common divisor must divide 143. Great. What are the divisors of 143? Let's talk about that. Well, 143 is divisible by 1, 11, 13, and itself, right? Because 143 is basically product of two primes. It only has four divisors. Well, I'm talking about positive divisors, of course. Great. Now, let's go ahead and do the following. Since we now know that D needs to divide 143, and D is the greatest common divisor, so we can safely say the following. Suppose or let... A can be written as a capital AD and B can be written as capital BD such that A and B are relatively prime. Now, how do you write relatively prime in this type of notation? You can just use parentheses for the GCD of AB, which is equal to 1. Since A and B are relatively prime, their common divisor is going to be 1. So this fact we're going to use a lot while we're going through the cases. All right, let's take a look at another one. Well, here's the thing. I know that D is the greatest common divisor, but is there a way to express M in terms of D? Obviously, since M is a multiple of D, it needs to be D times something, right? What is that thing? Well, take a look at these two numbers. A and B are relatively prime, and we know that A can be written as big A D, and B is big B D. So, since A and B are relatively prime, the common multiple, the least common multiple, definitely needs to contain both the big A and big B, because they're relatively prime, so they're going to be in the product. So M can be written as capital A, capital B, times D, of course, because it also needs to contain D as well. You can also use the fact that the product of the GCD and the LCM, let me write it down here, the product of the GCD and the LCM is equal to the product of the numbers. Now, if you replace A with big A, D, and this one with big B, D, and divide both sides by B, you're also going to be getting the same answer. So now we have M, which is the least common multiple in terms of A, B, D, which is nice. Great. Now we're going to be using all these facts. Let's put it together and let's take a look at different cases. We know that D divides 143, and we said that the smallest number that satisfies it is 1. So let's start with that one. How about this? Case by case. Okay, great. So what if D is equal to 1? Well, it just means that M minus D, and 
Notice that I was able to write M as A, B, D. From now on, I'm just necessarily gonna say big A, big B because you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, a, B, D minus D. And obviously I can write it as D times A, B minus one. And I can always do this. So M minus D is basically always equal to this. Just remember that. And this, in this case, is given as 143. Now, but we know that D is equal to one. So A, B minus one is gonna equal a, B minus 1 is going to equal 143. In other words, I'm trying to say that from this equation, M minus D is equal to D times A, B minus 1, and that's always equal to 143. So this is basically uh, always going to be true. So I can safely say that, well, I can just isolate the A, B minus 1 here and write it as 143 over D, and then just add 1 to both sides so that I can always write A, B, A, B as this. So this is good because this allows you basically to express AB, the product, in terms of D. Now, this is nice because uh, A and B are relatively prime, so you can only, you know, uh, factor them in a certain way. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So AB is equal to 144, and if you use this formula, you would get the same thing pretty much. Now, the product of two numbers that are relatively prime is 144, so those numbers can be limited, right? For example, the big A can be 16 and the big B can be 9 or vice versa. Again, at the end, I'm going to take care of that. So don't worry about the order right now. Let's just go off of this. In this case now, since I know that the small A is equal to the big A times D and the small B is equal to the big B times D, I know these facts because D is the greatest common divisor and A and B are relative prime. So I can, I can safely say that since D equals 1 in this case, the small a is going to be the same as big A and the small b is going to be the same as big B because d is equal to 1. Great. Okay, so 16 and 9 basically go, are going to satisfy my equation. But that's not the only case because you can also find 144 and 1. This will also work. And again, the a would be 144, not 16. And the small b is going to be 1 in this case. Okay, so these are cases that work for d equals 1. Now, let me go ahead and take a look at the second case scenario. So, what is the second case scenario? Well, second case scenario is d equals 11. Now, we know that the product ab is equal to 143 over d plus 1. Remember, we, we came up with this formula, and we know that d is equal to 11. So, 143 divided by 11 is equal to 13. 30 plus 1 is equal to 14. So, now I have ab equals 14. Think about two numbers that are relatively prime. So A can be 7 and obviously big B and big A, I'm talking about those. Big A can be 7 and big B can be 2. Now D equals 11, so what I need to do is to find my uh, small A's and B's, I have to multiply these by D, which is the greatest common divisor. So in this case, uh, the small A is going to be 77 and the small B is going to be 22. That's just going to be another pair, but not ordered pair, I'm going to write it as a set again to take care of the orders, all right? But there's another scenario here which can happen if A is equal to 14, the big one, and the big B is equal to 1, obviously, because they are relatively prime. Notice that 14 and 1 are relatively prime. Okay, great. So from here, A is going to be the small A. I got to multiply uh, 14 by 11. That's going to give me 154. And the small B is going to be obtained by multiplying 1 by 11, which gives me 11. Great. So these are also going to be valid solutions, and that's it pretty much for 14. Let's take a look at another case. Now, suppose D is equal to 13, and again, using my identity, AB is equal to 143 divided by D plus 1. If you divide 143 by D and add 1, let's go ahead and do it. 143 divided by 13 is equal to 11. 11 plus 1 is equal to 12. So from here, I'm going to get the product AB equals 12. So which two numbers can you find? Uh, so, such that they're relative to the prime and their product is 12. Well, A can be 4 and B can be 3, obviously. And to find your small A's and B's, you've got to multiply them by D, which is 13 in this case. So 4 times 13 is going to be 52. And 3 times 13 is going to be 39. Or, of course, they can switch around. Now, another scenario here would be A can be 12 and B can be 1, the big ones. And from here, the small A is going to be 12 times 13, which is... Did I say 200? Oh, no. 156, right? That's going to be 156. And the small b is going to be 3 times 13. Wait, not that. Uh, 1 times 13, which is 13. So 156, 13 is going to be another set, you know, 
that is a solution. And that's it for 12. Now let's take a look at the next case scenario, which is the last one that we need to look at, where D is equal to 143. This is the maximum value for D. So from here we get, again, AB is equal to 143 divided by D plus 1. If you divide 143 by itself, we're going to get 1 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. If AB is equal to 2, obviously, and they have to be relatively prime, we don't really have a lot of cases. That's just one case and then switch them around. A equals 2, B equals 1. And from here, my small A is going to be 2 times 143, which is 286. And the small B is going to be 100, 1 times 143, which is 143. And... These are pretty much all the solutions. So let's go ahead and put it all together and write our answer as a summary. So our values are going to be, like I said earlier, that's going to be a set, right? Let's go ahead and write it down here. So AB as a set, we're going to have different values. The reason why I write it as a set instead of an order pair is because I don't want to repeat those, but let me go ahead and list all these. Now we got 1 and 144, obviously, this represents A equals 1, B equals 144, and A equals 144, and B equals 1. So vice versa. Okay, another set would be 9, 16, and another one would be 11, 154, and then I have 13 and 156, then I have 22 and 77, and then I have 39 and 52, and then finally I have 143 and 286. So basically, these are going to be all the solutions to this equation, which is a GCD LCM equation. All right. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye bye.